Hey guys, let's talk Illustrator type tools. So when using Illustrator, there are a number of different tools we can use to set up our workspace and uh, do effective typography. And so I wanna highlight some of the common basic tool settings and uh, things that we use uh, to get the best results. So if you look over on your toolbar, right now I happen to have the basic toolbar. Um, doesn't really matter, but what I can do is change that toolbar into advanced. It's just one of those little annoying things that I like to have the expanded toolbar when I'm working in Illustrator. Also, um, another thing you can do is under the window menu, there is a workspace called typography. And that workspace pulls up the most common uh, palettes that you're gonna use for uh, type design. And that's something you can do to uh, rearrange your palettes and set up your stuff. So essentially we've got the normal type tool over here on the toolbar, I'm gonna click it. And there are two ways to add type to a page in Illustrator. The first way would be to just click. And on the new version of Illustrator, what it does is it drops in some lorem ipsum, you know, that little, Latin placeholder, and it highlights it so it's already ready to type on. So I can just type over it whatever, whatever I wanna type, and it gives me the flashing cursor, and I've basically made a line of text. If I switch to the selection tool, you'll see that it shows me, well, I'm gonna zoom in here, it shows me the text, and it shows me that it has a little anchor point on the, on the left, and that text can be moved and scaled uh, resized and repositioned on my page just using the selection tool. The second way to add text is to create a text box. Using the text box and using a line of type is slightly different and I'll just kind of explain why. I'm going to switch back to the type tool here and I'm going to drag and drop a box first, let go, and then now it's filled that box with text. So the text box is a container, holds all the text together, keeps it in position. But here's how it's a little bit different when using the selection tool. I'm gonna to switch to the selection tool. This time you'll see if I, dra I drag one of the adjustment corners, it doesn't actually scale the text, it scales the box. So by default, those tools are meant to adjust the container and not the text itself. Whereas when you're selecting a regular old line of text, it treats the text like an object, which can be scaled and moved as a group. Also, look what happens when I rotate a line of text. I can rotate that line of text just by dragging on the uh, rotate corner. If I do that to this text, notice how it rotates the box, but it doesn't actually rotate the text inside. Now, you can rotate a box. Um, Let's see. There's a, there's a way to do it, but for now, let's just worry about uh, adjusting either the line of text or the object um, text box. All right, so that's those tools. I'll just kind of get rid of those. Next, let's click and hold this time on our type tool, and you can see that we have the area type tool. Now, the area type tool is basically a text box, but it can be used to make any object into a text box. So let's say I draw a circle here, just a big circle shape, and then I use that area type tool. I switch to the area type tool and then I just click on that shape on the edge. It drops in that text inside that shape. So that's all the area type tool does, is it makes any object you've drawn into a text box. So that allows for some customization when you're putting uh, blocks of text on your page. Let's look at the next one. Type on a path. Now this one is one of my favorites. So let's say that you have uh, a wavy line and you'd like your text to follow kind of a wavy path. I'm gonna go ahead and use the pen tool and I'm just gonna quickly draw a little wavy line just like that. 
I'm going to press escape. So let's go. I'm going to switch back to the type tool. And this time I'm going to select type on a path. And then I'm going to click on the edge. And you always have to look for the vector line. I know this is a little confusing because this has a fill color in it. Let me go ahead and turn that off. And then you can see it's just a plain old vector line. And when I hover the cursor over the line and click, you'll see then it drops in some of that placeholder text. And that text now follows the curve of that path. That's essentially what type on a path is. It's just putting text on uh, any vector line, which can then be adjusted, twisted, tilted, or moved around. Now, there are a couple little uh, tools, adjustment tools that are visible here on this path, on this line of text. I want to explain them to you. Um, they may be kind of faint and hard to see on, on the screen capture, but basically that original vector line has these anchor points and the curves, but then you see these perpendicular lines that appear uh, connected to that that guide, that, uh, that vector line. The one in the middle is the sliding uh, tool. So when you grab that and drag with the uh, direct selection tool, you're basically moving your text. It doesn't move very far on this short little wavy line. The one on the end with the square, that is where the text ends. So you can actually you know, cut off the line and force a return basically to another line. That little square that just turned red with the little red plus in it, that's a connection point. So let's say I needed my text to go from one wavy line to another. I would click that plus symbol and then I would connect to another line of text and click again and it would continue the text onto that new line, like jumping the track. So you can make adjustments to that but to be able to reveal these adjustment lines, you have to be using the direct selection tool. Same thing with your insertion point. There is a, a left-hand insertion point where the, te the text begins, and that can be slid and, and moved. And there you can see there's that entry point where if you were connecting text from one box to another, you could continue on that second line. So. Those are a few more things to pay attention to as you're drawing with, um, with text on a curve. And actually, now let's see what it looks like if we put it on a circle. So I'm going to switch to the ellipse tool, and I'm going to draw a circle on my page. Next, I'm going to go back to the type on a path tool. So what I want to do is I want my text to run around the circumference of the circle. So if I click on the edge of the circle, you'll see that it dropped in a ring of text around the entire uh, object. And here's something to, to look out for. I'm gonna switch now to the direct selection tool. And I'm gonna zoom in. So do you see the, the insertion point and the adjustment bar? They are there visible on that circle. Okay, but their position, um, because this was a circle, a 360 degree circle, it decided to start the text where I clicked originally with the cursor and continue all the way back around again. And the adjustment dial shows up on the opposite side. <laughs> so sometimes this is confusing for students looking for the, uh, the adjustment line. But when you move that line, you can reposition the text wherever you want it to be. But here's the goofy thing. Watch what happens when I let go. Okay, when I let go, that just flips sides on me. There we go. I can also click and drag inward. And I'm still holding onto my mouse and I've dragged the text inward. So now it's actually moving the text on the inside of the circle. So you can reposition your text on the outside or the inside depending on where you drag with your cursor. And now these lines have converged. Notice how 
when I drug this thing around, it converged. So my insertion point flipped upside down and got connected with the exit point. So, you know, I can move or dial those, those text lines around. Well, let's say I was trying to make this do a logo. Let me go ahead and just go back to the type on a path tool. Uh, I'm just going to type in a word. Okay, and I'm going to dial this thing around because I want this text to be along the top of that circle. Okay, and then let's say I'm going to make it a little bolder. I'm going to make it bigger and bolder. Um, depending on which view you have on Illustrator, you may be able to drag the, uh, the type selector from the top. Also, the, the font size can also be adjusted there. What's nice about the latest version of Illustrator is you get a preview of your font when you use the drop-down menu. So you can pick a font based on how it looks because it can be really hard to memorize the names of the fonts. So that way, I just picked it based on how it looks. Okay, this is another little thing. It is a little bit sensitive. So depending on where you drag your cursor, sometimes it'll flop on you and you just have to kind of hold on and kind of drag in that direction again until it comes back. Sometimes that's a little frustrating. Dang, I lost it. Let me try to slide that back and slide that dial back. There we go. So it's still, it's not cooperating. Okay, so there's that. Now what if I wanna have text going the opposite direction? Um, it's not possible to put text on the outside and the inside of your logo at the same time, uh, or of your uh, shape at the same time. So you get one or the other. So what that means is if I wanna have text going the opposite way, I'm gonna have to draw an entirely new circle. So I would do that, draw that circle, and then I'd have to add text to that circle. And then I'd have to then flop this and dial it around until I got it where I wanted it to be. And then kind of position that underneath the other text. So basically, if you need to do that kind of a combination, you've got to go on two shapes and make those adjustments based on those um, on the position, on the visual position. So that's kind of a basic way of adding text to a circle or some other kind of a shape. That's really handy. Uh, let's go back and look at some of the other text tools. Well, there's vertical type and vertical type, uh, vertical area type, vertical type on a path. Um, those operate the same as the other. The only difference is, let's say I pick vertical type. That means that it's going to put that, stack that text. Instead of running it horizontally, it's running it vertically. So I think you get the idea that it does the same thing as the other tools, just changes the direction. Now I want to mention my absolute favorite tool, the touch type tool. Oh, uh, I can't use it just yet. Um, I need to actually put my text on the page, then I use the type tool, touch type tool. Let's do that. Uh, I'm going to go back and click on the type tool and I'm just going to add a word here. And then now I can go to the touch type tool. And this is what's fun about the touch type tool. The touch type tool allows you to grab each, each letter independent of the others. And you can actually stretch it, scale it, rotate it. And so pretty quickly, you can make these really interesting and unique arrangements of letters which would be really hard to do if you're trying to do it manually, right? Because I'm visually adjusting the, um, the kerning and the letter spacing. I'm doing that all visually instead of manually speaking. So to do that manually be, would, would be really difficult. Let me show you what I mean. I click on the character palette and if you don't have it visible, Go to the window menu, scroll down to the type uh, sub menu and select character. 
Okay, character is the dedicated palette to typography. And um, it has an expandability. So if you don't see these options, you can click on the character tab and it'll expand or contract the palette. But if I'm using a normal block of text, let's say I try this again. Um, this has your typical type controls like um, scale and you can change the size. Uh, you manually put in a type value. You can adjust the, um, uh, the uh, scale, you know, vertical scale or horizontal scale. You can adjust the kerning for the letter spacing. You can stretch, you know, a lot of different options here. Um, you can even, you know, move the uh, letter X height, you can move it up or down. So these are all those types of controls where you can manually do those adjustments. But I think it's a lot better now that we have the type tool that we can just, I mean, the touch type tool that we can just kind of go in there and do it ourselves. It certainly makes for a more uh, interesting or, you know, less rigid uh, type layout possibility there with that tool. So those are the basic tools for operating type. A couple of other things you should be aware of is you do have a paragraph palette and that's where you can do other type layout controls like uh, alignment, you know, left, right, or center. You can do indents, superscripts, hyphenate, you know, those kinds of options are there uh, under the paragraph palette. Um, there is also like an open type palette where you can adjust and select glyphs if you have special glyphs for your type. Um, there are some character styles. I'm not going to get into that, but there's a character style palette similar to the way um, InDesign works, similar with a uh, paragraph style and stuff like that. Probably the next thing I should show you is how to deal with, um, with outlining type. Most of the time or a lot of the time when you're building logos and uh, other types of dedicated graphics, you need to be able to outline your type. In other words, you need to make your type into shapes. And so if you go to the type menu, what we're going to do is select a block of text, switch up to the type menu and look for create outlines. So what create outlines does is it um, basically converts that text into a shape, a permanent shape so that it can't be modified or changed later. It's really important when you're making a logo or something that you need that text locked in and, uh, so that it can't be editable. It also unlocks a few other features for coloring and makes it easier to do some things like that as well. But uh, many times you need to be able to do that because the last thing you want to do is make a logo file in Illustrator and then lose track of the typeface and then try to reuse that artwork. And then that logo file is kind of useless without the actual attached font embedded in the, in the file. So now that it's a shape, uh, it, it reacts like a shape. So those objects can be modified and adjusted like any other shape would be uh, inside Illustrator. So that's a, a nice way to play with, with fonts and turn them into uh, logo graphics and things like that. All right, so that's a basic rundown of some of the things you need to know using your type tools and hope that helps.